If you would please stand as you are able. You can follow along with the service on the screen in front of you. We welcome you in the name of Jesus, the Savior of the world. We are gathered to worship, to proclaim Christ crucified and risen, to remember before God our brother Jim, to give thanks for his life, to commend him to our merciful Redeemer, and to comfort one another in our grief. All who were baptized into Christ have put on Christ. In his baptism, Jim was clothed with Christ. In the day of Christ's coming, he shall be clothed with glory. Eternal God, maker of heaven and earth, who formed us from the dust of the earth, who by your breath gave us life, we glorify you. We glorify you. Jesus Christ, the resurrection and the life, who suffered death for all humanity, who rose from the grave to open the way to eternal life, we praise you. We praise you. Holy Spirit, author and giver of life, the comforter of all who sorrow, our sure confidence and everlasting hope, we worship you. We worship you. To you, O blessed Trinity, be glory and honor forever and ever. Amen. Amen. And together, let us sing, How Great Thou Art.
You may be seated. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Let us pray together our prayer of the day. Almighty God, source of all mercy and giver of comfort, graciously tend those who mourn, that casting all their sorrow on you, they may know the constellation of your love. Through your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. On behalf of Jim's family and the staff here at Zion Lutheran Church, we give you thanks that you have come here today to celebrate and remember a life lived. We welcome you to Zion. Our profound hope for you today is that you hear the proclamation of God's love for all people and the promise of eternal life found in our Savior, Jesus the Christ. There will be a time of fellowship and a meal following today's service. All are welcome to stay. Jim's interment will take place following the meal at Sunset Memorial Garden. Our readings for this morning were chosen by Jim's family. Our first reading is from Isaiah chapter 43, verse 1 through 4. But now, thus says the Lord, He who created you, O Jacob, He who formed you, O Israel, do not fear, for I have redeemed you. I have called you by name, and you are mine. When you pass through the waters, I will be with you, and through the rivers. They shall not overwhelm you. When you walk through fire, you shall not be burned, and the flame shall not consume you. For I am the Lord your God, the Holy One of Israel, your Savior. I give Egypt as your ransom, Ethiopia and Sepia in exchange for you, because you are precious in my sight, and honored and love you. I give people in return for you, nations in exchange for your life. In our second reading is from 2 Corinthians chapter 5. For we know that if the earthly tent we live in is destroyed, we have a building from God, a house not made with hands, eternal in the heavens. So we are always confident, even though we know that while we are at home in the body, we are away from the Lord, for we walk by faith, not by sight. Yes, we do have confidence, and we would rather be away from the body and at home with the Lord. So whether we are at home or away, we make our aim to please him. For all of us must appear before the judgment seat of Christ so that each may receive recompense for what has been done in the body, whether good or evil. In a reading from 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, But we do not want you to be uninformed, brothers and sisters, about those who have died, so that you may not grieve as others do who have no hope. For since we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so, through Jesus, God will bring with him those who have died. For this we declare to you by the word of the Lord that we who are alive, who are left until the coming of the Lord, will by no means precede those who have died. For the Lord himself will come down from heaven with a loud command, with the voice of the archangel, and with the trumpet call of God. And the dead in Christ will rise first. And a reading from the Gospel of John, chapter 6. Everything that the Father gives me will come to me, and anyone who comes to me I will never drive away. For I have come down from heaven not to do my own will, but the will of him who sent me. And this is the will of him who sent me, that I should lose nothing of all that he has given me, but raise it up on the last day. This is indeed the will of my Father, that all who see the Son and believe in him may have eternal life and I will raise them up on the last day. Grace to you in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ. Again, I welcome you and thank you for being here. As Jim would say, this is going to be a busy day. 
I'm honored that I had the opportunity to get to know Jim here in my short time at Zion. When meeting Jim, you almost instantly knew what a kind soul he was. This is how Jim is consistently described by those who knew him and loved him. But there are a couple things about Jim that maybe some of you didn't know. For example, Jim was a celebrity, or at least when he, his kids were younger. That's what they thought. No matter where they went, Fargo, Bismarck, Minot, there were people that would know Jim that would say hello, especially former students. And from what I can gather, he never forgot a name, making those encounters even more special. Jim also had super hearing, even when he got older, and sometimes even myself would forget how well he could hear. Jim touched so many people in his lifetime. Just scroll down through his tribute wall on the Thompson and Larson website. One of those stories stuck out to me. A former student wrote, he came to be our new principal in Burlington when I was in grade school. I loved our principal, Mrs. Strom, and was scared of having a man take her place. And when he showed up, boy, was I ever intimidated. He was so tall. But it took about two minutes to see that he was a very kind and caring man, and everything was going to be just fine. I remember seeing him leap to swat a ball away from a kid who didn't see it coming. I have this vision of him in a suit and tie taking this gigantic step and hitting that ball away. And all I could think was, wow, that was awesome. Jim, you're pretty awesome, yeah. Jim had an abundance of gifts. Kindness, gentleness, a sense of humor, a loving father and grandfather a teacher, a celebrity, and don't forget that super hearing. When I was thinking about scripture readings for today, I came across the story of Jesus washing his, feet, his disciples' feet from the Gospel of John in chapter 13. Jesus, who was known to his disciples and many others as teacher. Jesus, teacher, is gathered with those he loves, knowing that he will soon be leaving them. And as a sign of Jesus' love of his disciples, he washes their feet, even Judas, the one that he knows has betrayed him. His disciples are taken aback. No, no, teacher, don't wash my feet, because it was the servant's job to wash feet, not Teachers or people of higher status. You see, at that time, Jesus was teaching his disciples a lesson. To serve one another. To love one another as Christ loves with joy, humility, peace, patience, kindness, generosities, generosity, faithfulness, gentleness. That's what we call the fruits of the Spirit. And we are called to mirror this love of Christ, the fruits of the Spirit. And I believe that Jim did that to the best of his ability. Today is tough. Not only do we celebrate a life lived, we also grieve the loss of a friend, a father, a grandfather, and a husband. We place our hope in the midst of the sadness, in the promise of eternal life found in Christ, who after washing the feet of his disciples, died on a cross, and three days later rose to life in the resurrection. And while he was here, he still walked and taught his disciples before he ascended into heaven. It is in Christ's resurrection that we trust Jim is now in the arms of God, our creator, who knows us all by name. Jim, who has been reunited with his beloved wife, Charlotte, and together, I hope you can imagine that they are traveling in a heavenly camper, watching over their loved ones, waiting patiently for all to be reunited together again with the saints in heaven. In the weeks, in the days, in the months, in the years to come, may God's 
spirit of comfort, peace, and kindness wash over you. And Jim, thank you for teaching us kindness and mirroring caring. You will be missed by many, but we give thanks to God that we all had the honor of knowing you. Praise be to God. Amen. The congregation, let us sing together just a closer walk with thee. Together, let us confess the faith of our church with the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. We'll continue with the prayers of intercession with the congregation responding with hear our prayer. Almighty God, in holy baptism, you have knit your chosen people together into one communion of saints in the body of Christ. Give to your whole church in heaven and on earth your light and your peace. God of mercy, hear our prayer. 
Grant that all who have been baptized into Christ's death and resurrection may die to sin and rise to share the new life in Christ. God of mercy, hear our prayer. Give courage and faith to all who mourn in a certain and sure hope in your loving care that casting all their sorrow on you, they may have strength for the days ahead. God of mercy, hear our prayer. Grant to us who are still in our pilgrimage and who walk as yet by faith that where this world groans in grief and pain, your Holy Spirit may lead us to bear witness to your light and life. God of mercy, hear our prayer. Help us in the midst of things we cannot understand to believe and trust in the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins and the resurrection to life everlasting. God of mercy, hear our prayer. God of grace, we give you thanks for family, friends, and your church. We ask your blessing on the following time of fellowship and the food that has been prepared. Through the fellowship and the food, strengthen us for your service. God of mercy, hear our prayer. God of all grace, we give you thanks because by his death, our Savior Jesus the Christ destroyed the power of death, and by his resurrection he opened the kingdom of heaven to all believers. Make us certain that because he lives, we shall live also, and that neither death nor life nor things present nor things to come will be able to separate us from your love in Christ Jesus our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God now and forever. Amen. And gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, Let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not in temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Let us commend Jim to the mercy of God, our Maker and Redeemer. Into your hands, O merciful Savior, we commend your servant, Jim Goodman. Acknowledge, we humbly beseech you, a sheep of your own fold, a lamb of your own flock, a sinner of your own redeeming. Receive him into the arms of your mercy, into the blessed rest of everlasting peace, and into the glorious company of the saints in light. Amen. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord's face shine on you with grace and mercy. May the Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. And I'll ask you to stand as you are able, and we'll sing our closing hymn on eagle's wings. Mm -hmm. 